There's something I can't figure out. Odin wants to prevent Ragnar. But the serpent's already been there and seen it. So hasn't he already failed? Beats a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Fate is another lie told by the gods. Nothing is written that cannot be unwritten. On that, brother, you and the Old Father may just agree. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. Remind me later to tell you about the wolves. why you ever wanted to work for Odin. Back then, I was young enough to still be ambitious. The Aesir gods were as powerful a force as I'd come across, but they clearly lacked for strategy, focus, and sage counsel. All this could I faithfully provide. And so, a stranger from a far-off island found himself with Odin's ear, trusted as he trusted no one but himself. And with that kind of power, laddie, I must confess, there are perks. Yeah, but he's Odin. I never claim to be perfect, laddie. Only clever. And often too clever by half. So what'd you do to get Odin so mad at you? Well, for a long time my job was to enable Odin, and I was fucking excellent at it. Gradually, as I grew more to care about people and the world, my job became to contain him. To protect him from himself. By serving peace, I served his interests as well. That's the truth. But he saw it as disloyalty. No lo longer trusting my motives, but not wishing to part with my brain or tongue, he bound me to a tree and adopted a new pastime of casual torture. Well, I'm glad we came along to cut off your head. Aye, lad. Lucky break that was. guys part of his crew? That's a tough crew. And all were his responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility. Does it frighten you? Uh... Responsibility. Oh, uh, no. I don't think so. I mean, I think it used to. But not as much anymore. Why is that? Well, being out here. With you. It makes me feel more grown up. I can read what this says now, but it's a name. Hilder! Whoa! The name made it light up! It's the name of one of the Valkyries. That's quite curious.
You never told me what happened with the stonemason's son. Rimthur, son of Thamur. After completing his father's masterwork, the Great Wall of Jotunheim, he thought of nothing but making the Aesir pay for their crimes against the giants. Once, he longed to fight Thor, but tragedy had brought wisdom to Hrimthur and cunning. He observed that Asgard's walls were half-built and shoddy, for no Aesir god could be bothered with such tiresome labor. So Hrimthur adopted the guise of an ordinary man and made the Aesir an offer. He would build them majestic new walls, and if he couldn't build them within two turns of the season, they would owe him nothing for his labours. And if he succeeded, he asked only for an audience with the goddess Freya. Odin agreed, knowing the task was impossible, but intrigued by this stranger. Arinthur made short work of it, of course. He had the benefit of his father's training and the aid of a magical stallion for fetching stones. Odin was not happy to find himself on the losing end of the wager, but he seemed to uphold his end of the bargain. Freya was sent to meet the mason, and to her surprise, he wanted only to whisper something in her ear. That being done, he made his way out of Asgard, and when he found Thor awaiting him at the gates of Midgard, he knew he had been double-crossed. But he didn't care, because his plan was complete. It was? What did he say to Freya? Only she could say for certain, but I've had many moons to work it out. Harimthur knew that Freya loathed the Aesir, despite her marriage to Odin, and I believe he gave her the secret to Asgard's defences. Some weakness he may have built in, structural or magical, which I expect will be exploited come Ragnarok when Surtur arrives to burn Asgard to ash, if not sooner. One cat can lead so many men. He had their loyalty, so they followed. And then they all died. He must have been a bad leader. Why do you think that? Well, he led all these men to their deaths. True. But these men chose to follow. Hmm. Even good leaders make poor choices. The best take responsibility for them. Remember this. Boy, over here. Sir! Okay, that's going in the journal.
Get up, brother! ago, yes. I led men in battle. Were you a good leader? It is complicated. Did you no ever... No more questions, boy. Focus on the task at hand. Yes, sir. the first giant. Where did he come from? In the beginning, there was Ganungagop, the Great Void. There were no realms yet, only primordial forces. There was fire, and there was ice, and there in the void they met and produced... Water? More than water. The mystic lifeblood of something entirely new. From this water, Ymir took form and became a being of pure creation and chaos, mother and father to all that came after. Even the Aesir? Aye. Every god, man and beast came first from Ymir's flesh. Though it was the Aesir who thought themselves so superior that they should hold dominion over the rest of creation. It was Odin who took arms against his creator and spilled Ymir's lifeblood with his spear. A necessary evil, he would say, to bring order to the realms. From Ymir's torn flesh, Odin would fashion the realm of Midgard for his own. Called himself All-Father, as if he was the creator, and not the creator's destroyer. A small, covetous tyrant. Ymir? Huh? Oh. Sorry, my boy. Ah, uh, you know, I think at best we just end it there, actually.
Here. Boy. Sir. Another map. Here we'll find some. The spear. You need the experience. I've had plenty of experience fighting these things. What's the real reason? Hmm. This man inspired loyalty. He took responsibility for his mistakes, and he was determined to fix them. These are good lessons for you. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. I see something down there. Ed, you are full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? He just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Brunia, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but no. Brungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart, so the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Brungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Rhaenyra's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. My men are... they roam no longer. That's right. We kill... uh... We laid them all to rest. I see. So even in death, I am a failure. But in life you were honorable, strong-willed, and you inspired loyalty. These are good qualities, aren't they, boy? Yeah. I couldn't believe how many men followed you here. I thank you for your kind words. May your journey have a more pleasant end than mine. Well, you're right. You didn't seem very satisfied. I guess you never really get over losing ones you care about.